All right, so where do I start? Um, thank you, everyone. Um, thanks for all the students and putting a semester of extremely hard work in this such a hard time and strange time during a, a, a pandemic. And I think we've all done super well. And also, uh, you know, like we have the support from Gagana, who's really working really tirelessly, leading all the students around. And we're really grateful that she joins us at Swinburne. Yeah, it's very fun. And um, and we really thank our guests today uh, for giving giving us their time. They all just, all both of them, are, I'm pretty sure George is the same. All, all of them just finished their work and rushed to here and going yeah, to spend three hours with us. So, um, thank you. Okay, so I'll do a quick introduction. So here's Alex, Alex Penner. So Alex is a registered architect in the US and, uh, and a chartered member of the Royal Institute of uh, British Architect. Um, Alex has been working in the architectural industry since 2005 with a broad range of experience in mid-sized to large scale projects. Throughout his career, Alex has played key leadership roles at um, award-winning design firms around the world, including Fosters and Partners, uh, Cecil Bauman's Bauman Studio in the UK and Frank Gehry's Gehry Technology from California. So um, he completed his formal studies at SciArc in California and then later on went on to complete a PhD at RMIT. Uh, so for the past year and, and a half, Alex has returned to Melbourne and is now fully engaged in uh, enhancing our built environment, uh, working as project lead on cutting edge residential hospitality and educational project throughout Australia. And we have Cecilia, Cecilia Martinez. Uh, Cecilia is a, an associate at Architectus. She is a Dominican Republic accredited architect with professional experience gained both locally and internationally. Her experience include working across all project stages on medium to large scale projects and including uh, urban design and master planning. And in 2015, uh, Cecilia joined Greenshaw Melbourne Metro Rail Project, uh, the team, to work on the design of the metro station. As you know, we're building the metro station now in Melbourne. It's probably gonna take 10 years. But Cecilia was the, on the team who started the work. And uh, since then, Cecilia has extended her experience in the transport and infrastructure sector uh, working on a number of significant uh, transport projects in Sydney, Melbourne, and regional Victoria. And apparently she's working on some project that we're not allowed to know. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> and, uh, then we have Joshua. Josh uh, is joining us from Sydney. Josh, <laughs> so yeah, wave your hand so people know where you are. Thanks, Josh. Uh, so Josh, Joshua Ho is a senior architect at John McAsland and Partners, a British firm as well, um, and has worked in Melbourne, Sydney, Hong Kong, and the UK in the past 10 years. His professional portfolio includes complex institutional projects such as hospitals, university buildings, government buildings, as well as um, law courts and um, the Varium. Wow. He specializes in the delivery of projects with in-depth briefs, multiple stakeholders, and often other architectural collaborators, and is currently working on the Waterloo Station. So similar, uh, working on natural projects. Um, and we have Gagana. Um, Gagana, can you wave your hand? So Joshua, yeah, so Joshua. Gagana is our, um, our lecturer at Swinburne, who just arrived last year. And uh, Gagana recently joined our faculty of art uh, health and art and design as a lecturer in architecture and uh, looking forward to work on interdisciplinary research projects and teach computational design and digital fabrication. So Gagana obtained her PhD degree with the Chair of Architecture and Digital Fabrication at ETH Zurich uh, under the guidance of Professor Gramazio uh, and Professor Matthias Kola. Uh, her doctoral Research built upon the discovery of a novel building material system that enables the construction of fully recyclable architectural elements, which is a very 
important topic during this time that uh, we're facing so much uh, environmental crisis. So the Ghana's focus lied on the observing of the material systems behavior under the load and the development of material and fabrication informed design processes. If you Google her, you will see her super cool uh, rock print pavilion on designs and all those um, design media. So prior to her doctoral uh, research, Gagana graduated at the um, iTech program uh, at ICD, uh, University of Stuttgart, uh, under the supervision of Professor uh, Akin Menges and Professor Jan Nikas. And uh, she also gained practical work experience in Germany, um, working for the engineering office of Nikas and Helbig, Advanced Engineering and Rush, Special and Lightweight Structures. Uh, as well as for the architectural office of Professor Kergesner. Yep. He's not here. He's not going to hear. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, well, people call my name in, in all these weird <laughs> pronunciations anyway. So, all right. So, thank you. Uh, thanks, everyone, for the time. So, let's start our presentation. So, the first group is. Light will pull. Are the teams ready? Can you uh, show your camera and say hi? Uh, so that, yeah. yeah. And showcase your background. That's your design. <laughs> Hello, my name is Robin. Hi, my name is Maisie. Hi, my name is Nguyen. Oh, nice. I like the red. I like <laughs> that night view. <laughs> All right, you may, you may uh, begin. I'm going to allow screen sharing. Yes. Hello, and welcome to our presentation, My Warpool. So, for the existing building contacts, this project is a renovation project located in Swinburne AD Beauty. Next, please. Sorry, it's a bit lacking. Okay. Um, the highlight area is where the renovation takes place. The proposed area are level one foyer area, back entrance, level two foyer area, corridor and elevator area. Here are some photos. This is interior level one, level two, in exterior back entrance. The concept of our group started from the, considering the existing AD building with a traditional volume of a rectangular prison. From there, we would like to suggest a more provocative design using organic curves to expand the space vertically and also horizontally and therefore making it more appealing and attracts people to make use of it more. The main material system of our design steel and glass, the transparency allow the north light coming in through the side of the design to brighten up the space. The light is then transported from the first floor to the ground floor to also lit up the um, entrance area. This is the reason why our group is called Light Warpool. Um, it is what the structure looked like when you first enter the building through the front entrance. To achieve, to achieve our concept ideas, um, firstly, a rough mesh is created with a fixed boundary at the columns, the back windows, and the two leg faces. The mesh is then let loose and upwards to create the organic form. Here's a documentation of our project. Um, the ground and the first floor plan just indicate the location of the column and also the leg at the back entrance. Here's the top view um, of our design. And the west elevation give us a look into the newly renovated area at the back entrance. For this renovation, curves are the main medium that we use. So that will be coherent with our main structure um, design language. The purpose of this renovation is also to um, create a uh, 
more appealing area that also works with our main design and also attract people to enter the building through the back entrance as well. Section is a very important drawing of our design and it demonstrates clearly our form concept, also um, about the lighting that coming through the design. For the footing detail, um, here I just want to express my wish to be able to conceal the footing um, by having an anchor with wide flanges secure in a concrete base so that it can hold the heavy weight of the structure. So this is a basic conceptual section of rainwater harvesting showing how we can conserve rainwater. With the help of the column structure, we can collect rainwater and transfer it to a water tank which can be made underneath the building. Then the harvested water can be easily used for bathroom facilities. This is another section looking at level two foyer area. The area behind both side walls where the existing classroom and office at. The structure in the middle is our group's design structure columns. There has box gutter on both sides which could allow rainwater to drain out, not just through the columns. And the walls on the both sides are existing walls. They're holding up the structure and bearing most of the weight. So we decide to reinforce the existing wall first to add I beams to connect structure to the walls. Move to the asymmetric drawings. Explore the connection of the design, shadings, and beams connect to the buildings. The concept we have for the shading is using the pyramid form and trim on top of it in a different angle to create a void allowing light to come in. And the reason we're adding the shading into the, our design because as the middle part of the building in level two expose very bright sunlight into the classroom. So we need the shadings to cover it and uh, from the materials, the fiber class will be the good option for it. For the shading system part, on the top left is the plan of the shading and the blue, blue gradient is where the grain waters will escape. And the perspective underneath is a arrow indicate the process, how the rain waters come into the shadings and escape at the notch of the frame. This is a section cut which showing a the shading connect into the steel frame by a rubber and a steel support and the shading detail of it. Also, we had a section that show a different connection of the angle frame. Coming to the segmentation is just an overview of all elements we construct into the deep in the building. This contain three parts. For part A is a all main elements to construct for the design, which have steel frame, glass panels, rubber support, and shading. And for part B, it's just an asymmetric to show a sub element connect into the shading system. And part C is to indicate the location of the shading into the steel frame. Moving on to construction strategies. So in order to execute our design structure, first of all, we need to demolish and alter some of the elements of existing building. So first we need to remove roof in our proposed area. So we'll be unscrewing all the panels, cut out and unscrew all the rafters from the trusses, unscrew ceiling and trim of all the ceiling joists and cut out all the trusses and lift each truss with the help of the queen. So the st second stage will be rectangular slab cutout. With the help of co-cutter machine, we'll be drilling in holes and after using breaker and cutter, we'll get a clear and smooth rectangular cutout. Also, we'll replace existing wooden railing with glass railing. Further, we'll demolish back entrance along with the steps and walkway and also create a cutout in the wall to place beam for our structure. So now we'll be placing them with the help of crane into three different parts and then this part will be welded together. Also we'll be attaching a box gutter in order to get rid of excess rainwater. So now we are all set for our mesh structure. Glass panels will be prefabricated and will be executed in a circular series. One by one sets of panel will be placed with the help of crane and will be joined with the screws with the existing panels and similar methods will be applied to the rest of the structure.
move to the exterior render of the, on the top view. As you can see, the shading is putting in a way that create a gradient effect. And here's the closer view of the shading system. Next is the back entrance of the building to see people interact with the design. And a closer view of the design and you can see a cast shadow very nice on the floor. And the exterior view show the change on the roof. Um, here are some interior renders. This is level one and level two. We would love for our design to have a significant at night too, because the building also operates until late for night classes. Therefore, LED lights are attached to the structure, contribute to lit up the space with some sub lighting system to create a nice ambience of both the indoor and outdoor space. And that is the end of our presentation. Thank you for your listening. Hope um, if you have any questions, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for presenting. Um, well done. Um, before you, before we go on, uh, let's welcome. I think John Setter, our program director of architecture program at Swinburne, is here. Hello, John. Hello. Hey. Thanks for joining us. Um, okay. So, please, I'll guess it's your time um, for feedback. Okay. Um, I joined late, so I might um, sort of uh, digest this one a little bit and uh, maybe we can. Yeah, they can hear you. Uh, Chen, did you did you want us to go alphabetically, or um, how would you like? Doesn't to matter. Go? Just uh, yeah, yes, please, Josh. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, um, I'm happy happy to go. For a second. Um, thank you, guys. That, that was really really impressive for a year two project. I definitely don't think I did that much work in year two. Um, it was. It was a great um, project. I wondered um, if you had done some kind of research into the two projects I thought of when I first saw it, which was um, the King Cross, King's Cross Station, St. Pancras um, in London, and also the Natural History Museum in London as well. I mean, it came out of my mind just because um, John McAslin, our managing partner, um, worked on those projects and um, it just struck me as very, very similar. So uh, uh, it would have been a great event on understanding the improved on the ideas on the, ideas, ideas, like, the all the um, environmental initiatives. Um, the biggest thing that I saw, which would have added some a lot of value to to your presentation, would have been some studies to kind of underpin um, the creative decisions behind the form making. Um, if you go back to this 3D view that you had um, from the exterior, looking at the roof. Um, yes. um, is it this one? And, um, kind of, you had a view kind of looking from above. Uh, oh, is it the mesh, original mesh? At an angle. Okay, we go from the start. Is it this one? Yeah, this one's fine. Yeah. So um, this idea of capturing the rain, I thought was really, really interesting, but I thought it was a bit of a missed opportunity in the way that where we've chosen to cut the roof in the gable form. Um, if you see the pitch of the roof that's being demolished, the rain is falling um, in the other direction. And the catchment that you're creating um, for this rainfall is just the, the hump that's beside the, the actual, actual whirlpool. It's just that small little hump that is actually diverting water into your whirlpool. So there's not a lot of catchment that's happening because the, you can see from the picture of the roof that's adjacent that 
the water is going elsewhere. Um, it would have been very interesting to see the studies um, that kind of form the positioning and the shape of that roof, um, I think would have strengthened your concept quite a lot. Um, the other thing you talked about was the, the idea of the shadows and controlling the light for kind of student comfort in the classrooms. And again, I think some diagrams kind of understanding how the light is penetrating through the space and where you've positioned them. I don't, I don't think maybe we didn't get time to, to get through that, but um, I think those two studies would have really strengthened. Those two initiatives would have brought a different layer to the project. Yes, thank you for your comments. Any, any opinion from you, John? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm I sort of arrived partway through this presentation, so I'm a little bit uh, sort of, I think I need a little bit of time to figure out the project. And is it? Well, um, my, my thoughts are a bit in line with Josh in terms of the decision of the geometry itself and how it's actually wrapping itself around the, the building itself. So for instance, I, I would have liked to have a better understanding of how you are understanding the arches that you're creating and how they're actually landing on the ground and why, like a bit trying to understand a bit more of the whys in your decision-making process. Um, for instance, the, the two points that sit on the, the back view, sorry, I'm like pointing to a screen that you guys can see. Um, <laughs> on the back view here, yeah, exactly, these two points. Um, I'm trying a bit to understand, like, for instance, if it is all about rain capture and light, so these two anchor points um, see, seem a bit, um, unresolved if that's a good way to put it um for instance those that big curve that those two are creating is actually going to create a big grip that you're actually not i'm not sure how that's reacting to the building itself and also then in terms of how it's actually anchoring itself to the ground um, my first comment would be like, well have, um would you also think about you know the issues that this building might bring in terms of like climbability and you know it could become a bit steep and some some people could actually have to climb up climb up the, the installation and i know it might be a bit too advanced to think about it for you guys <laughs> but it's something to definitely think about um in terms of when what you're creating you know it'll interact with people and how people then are motivated to interact with it as well um but uh the geometry as well um if you go to the top view that you had uh, yes. Is it this one? Yeah, this one. So I also, um, again, it's trying to understand. So the light that is actually coming down that well that you guys are creating is actually going to bounce a lot. And it might be creating a lot of interesting patterns. So to actually see, yeah, exactly. So to actually try to have a study to understand those shadows that you guys are creating and probably that next step would have been, would have probably pushed your design a bit further um, in ways that maybe, maybe the solid that you guys were forming might have, might have might found its way a bit um, further down into the, into the structure, not only as a ceiling element, but more as, you know, an element that captures and works with shadows and light. So that was kind of what you guys were, because again, I heard that as part of like your, your main focus plus, you know, work with light and how it's being captured, then you would have, it would have been good to see, to see it pushed, because right now it just seems that you're just, you're covering the toppest point, but light in this, in this element, it's a glass element, so it's, it's coming down all the way to the floor, so it's going to be reflective, and it's going to bounce a lot of light, so it would be good to also understand how that would react in daylight. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Cecilia. Um, I think we are, let's uh, move on to the next one. And, uh, mm -hmm. But if you go back to if well, first of all, I think well done, guys. Yeah, yeah these excellent, are, work. excellent work. Excellent <laughs> work. These are these are these are comments to help you make your work even better. 
exactly it's not a, it's not the, the work is great and that's why we're just saying you know it's saying critiques that actually elevate and you know just bring it to the next level yeah yeah, and yeah i really appreciate it because uh, you bring up many points that we haven't like considered much about before so this is really good <laughs> thank you yeah and i just wanted to add that uh, i think the level of the quality of the work that you presented is really advanced and i don't even see this at office environments yeah. from people who've been in the profession for 20 years so i think you already have a very high level of craftsmanship in the way that you present um and um i think just in what both of the crits have said have to do more about why we do things not necessarily about how we do them um and i think that's in the next group we'll probably focus a little bit on that but i think presentation wise and also um uh it, it just looks really good i think it's just now going back to the brief and then checking out your counter brief and making sure that um your your presentation is on point in terms of matching the brief great Okay, shall we move on to the next group? Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, everyone. All right. Uh, can we do an introduction for the next team? I believe it's uh, outside in. Um, yeah, hi. I'm Adam. I'm from the outside in group. So, John, if, sorry, <laughs> sorry. John, uh, if you don't know, all the backgrounds uh, the students are sitting in, that's their design. <laughs> Yeah, John here. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, keep going yeah. with. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, please introduce yourself. We have Adam. Yep. I'm Adam. And then I'm Emma. Jackie. I'm Irene. And, and we have Jackie. Oh, I like Jackie's view. Looks very. <laughs> All right. Up in, uh, this... Please start. Um. Okay, I'll share my screen. Okay, so just before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that this presentation is taking place on the lands of the Wurundjeri people, and we wish to acknowledge them as traditional custodians and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. So welcome, our project is titled Outside In, and as you know, our group consists of Jackie, Anna, Irene and myself, Adam. This is the site, the old administration building in um, Swinburne University, Hawthorne. And when we first got together, we sort of got together and sort of focused on four key areas or decided on four key themes that we wanted to focus on, that being sight, the use of light, um, human experience and connection. We came up with a spatial concept of um, using negative space and additional forms and a design concept, this concept uh, being outside in which is the experience of being outside the architecture looking in and then moving to inside the architecture looking out, which is and the resultant sort of question of where you are within the space, which then furthermore elicits a phenomenological response and gives that user a sense of presence and grounding. So some of those implementations we used for that was the proposed area is the ground floor and first floor floor of the building. Um, the old original bit, a bell tower, which is an in, to insert light, um, the experience of circulation and the repeated and reverse floor plans from floor to floor, and the arched window which are from the facade, which influences the internal forms and openings. Um, so we had lots of mid-pandemic Zoom meetings and scribbling on the screen, and that got us a lot of design iterations, which takes us to the conceptual design. So here is the north facing section and you start to see the relationship between the two floors and their forms, internal forms, and also the, the void that's created, which is kept and that sort of separation. This is the east facing section. And again, you start to see the relationship that we've used from the arch and how that's built to influence and in terms of the forms, internal forms. The floor plans, which, um, is used for, to demonstrates the circulation and the spatial program and how that's represented across floor to floor. The reflected ceiling plans, which you see, um, you're sort of beginning to see this beautiful geometry and the interaction through the skylight of the two floors and the two pieces of architecture. And with that, I'll hand it over to Anna. Thanks, Adam. So looking at the staircase going from the ground floor to the first floor, 
we wanted to create a sense of compression and release. So as you enter the staircase, the ceiling is quite high, but as you start moving up the space, it starts to become quite compressed, going along with the sense of feeling like you're inside the structure and then outside the structure. Next. So we created the staircase by subtracting a series of shapes from uh, timber panels, which results in this kind of floating staircase. This frees the space underneath the stair, creating some views and circulation. So next. So our handrail is carved out from the timber panels with a quite organic form that leads you up the staircase and leads you into the first floor seating area. Next. So the seating area on the first floor is centralized underneath that main skylight, which then the seating forms the skylight for the ground floor, which connects those spaces up together. Next. So to achieve our form with parametric design, we use grasshopper and rhino. So we started on the ground floor by creating a series of boundary points that go to an attractive point at the center of the space. We then extrude those line segments up to create a series of timber panels. And then we create the internal spaces by subtracting those shapes, then the entry points, the skylights, the stairway and handrail, and then the void space for resulting in our final form. So Jackie's going to talk next about some materials we used. Thanks, Anna. So for materials inside, we chose to expose one brick wall of the existing building to retain a connection to the original building's character with our design. With this in mind, we chose Victorian ash for the timber fins. Vic ash is a readily available and sustainably sourced timber with strawberry blonde hues that complement the raw brick nicely. Next. For construction, there are four stages involved with the aim of reducing the amount of heavy machinery required and ensuring everything can be brought onto site without modifying the existing building. Our goal is to create a clear process akin to building a DIY flat pack. Next. Stage one will include modifying the ceiling and roof structure and removing the existing staircase. Stage two is where we will construct the new skylight and tower. Next. Stage two also involves constructing the new staircase. And stage three involves applying a, our selected finishes before the fins are assembled. Next. Lastly, stage four is when the fins will be assembled within the space, starting with the fins on the first floor, then the staircase, then the ground floor, and finally the seating. The fins will be segmented for easy installation as demonstrated in this diagram, which Anna is going to talk more about now. Okay, so we had to split our panels up to be segmented to be easily manufactured off site and then assembled easily on site. So if you go next, we're using a CNC router to cut the panels into segments. So there's some examples of the types of cuttings of the sheet. So because the CNC is 2 for 40 by 120, we had to cut the, the segments according to the size of the, the CNC router. And next is Irene talking about some of the details. Thanks, Anna. So with the fin to ceiling connection, we thought that the most effective and supportive connection to use would be a track that will be mounted to the ceiling and would support each timber fin. And for the fin to floor connection, we wanted to achieve a seamless connection that was unseen but effective at the same time. Hence why we decided to use adjustable feet at the bottom of each timber fin, which you can twist and adjust to the correct height. The fins have also been raised off the floor to create a flowy aspect that will produce some extra shadows and definition within our structure. Next slide. With the staircase, we wanted to provide enough support for the users to obviously step on, which all, whilst also achieving a minimalistic design of a flowy staircase, which is why we decided to use uh, a cantilevered staircase. By doing so, the timber sleeves will be supported by RHS steel, and all these elements will then be supported by the steel stringer that will be attached to the double brick wall, which completes the documentation for the construction details. Next slide. Um, thanks, Irene. So that takes us to the final design. So um, this is a view upon the main entry from John Street. So you kind of sort of start to see that you're outside the architecture looking in and moving underneath the floating stairs. 
Um, this is a ground floor view looking back again, sort of this outside view looking in, and you also start to see the materiality and how that interplays with what we've chosen in Interax. Um, this is an internal view from the ground floor looking out um, to the floating staircase. This is the internal ground floor view looking through the two skylights um, and also with that connection between the two floors and then also sort of this interplay with the geometry that's being created from the arches. This is an internal view of the staircase moving towards the first floor. And this is the first floor. So again, you start to see this geometry that's being created from the arches and the interaction with light through the carved out space from the window. This is a view of the internal first floor looking out through the skylight. So it has this connection from the ground floor view and also this sort of repeated geometry um, that's being created for the arches. This is a view looking back. So again, this relationship between the arch and also um, this indicates sort of how the Vic Ash does actually interact and change with the lighting conditions as, as changes throughout the day. And lastly, we have the image looking back from the first floor, ground floor. So this um, beautiful geometry that's been created through the different arches is really sort of shown in this image and the um, transient light conditions. And then we just have a little animation of the form to end it. And um, thank you. If there's any questions, we'll um, happily take them. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for group. I have to say you perfect. You timed it so perfectly that uh, <laughs> my alarm went. <laughs> and I think I think that just sums up uh, the level of your presentation. Yeah. Um. So, uh, the guests, please. Um, I think, yeah, I'm just blown away. Um, I think throughout the whole presentation, we were just wondering, are any of you an architect doing an internship at an office, have a boyfriend or a girlfriend that is an architect, parent that is an architect, because you're ready to go. It's just starting it off right now. You're not a really good teacher. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Really good I, mean, I don't even know what to add or ask. I mean, it's it's such a high level of uh, output that um, you can almost only engage with it um, on aspects of materiality or the actual brief. And like, why did you decide to select uh, dome shapes and arches as your theme, as your thematic and seriality? Um, and, uh, but I mean, it's, I, I don't even know what to ask at this stage, mm -hmm. uh, except that um, there's just going to be a lot of timber. So wh which workshop, uh, which actual shop are you going to be hiring to do all the timber? <laughs> well, Anna, you, Anna, you're looking to... Possibly multiple, but whoever is willing to give us enough timber and have enough time to print all of these. I think there was, the, all, all up, I think there was about 2,000 panels or more. Yeah. Which, yeah, pretty. Cool. It's a big, but, um, big job. The next question is, um, and, and just to be picky with, but to be honest, being a little bit of a knucklehead here, um, when you make a flat sheet, um, how, how do you build a flat sheet? Because it, it looks like you're going to have to make a flat sheet out of multiple sheets because yeah. your panels are so large. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to do some kind of little um, notch in one sheet that blends into the next. Japanese With, Exactly. But not, but not use any knots and bolts so that it's actually they're glued. And there's a lot of engineered glues. Um, so maybe you can give an opinion on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think we looked, we looked into the segmentation process. But I suppose just to answer your question before in terms of the shapes of the domes, that, that was probably... I think one of the heavily influenced areas was to take the original facade window. So mm -hmm. that, that original sort of arch and that sort of classic geometrical shape um, is sort of used and sort of twisted to sort of in an, into a sort of new updated modern process. But um, yeah. that's sort of how we got the sort of internal forms. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, we got, we got the arch and we turned it around, which created that dome yeah. shape. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense now because you can see that he just took that original geometry and then just morphed it and played with the space. 
So, um, like Alex said, I'm, I'm actually really blown away a bit with this with this presentation. If it's it's a very well presented um, project, it actually looks like an actual project. Um, it, it's I, I as you guys were talking, um, we were just commenting. Like in my head, I'm just like, okay, honestly, the next thing that I'm gonna ask is like, I'm just gonna be picky to you know build thing, build it. So like. I'm going to start, like, for me, my question would be, um, so, and it's not even a question, it's just like a suggestion, and again, this is because I'm actually seeing this as something that can be built. My, my thinking is, um, for instance, you thought of the geometry of the handrail, but technically your handrail is in a consecutive element, so it's a, a handrail is something that actually guides um, a visually impaired person or someone who needs the, the assistance, so maybe that would have been a second detail to the paneling that you guys did to probably see how you can incorporate, you know, probably again, the next level of, of reality to this project of like, okay, if someone is actually going to go up these stairs, then maybe it's another set of details of how you actually join something into this panelization. Yeah. Um, and also, I guess my other comment would be, um, have you guys considered artificial light in this space because to just think about you know the light coming in through the windows but it is an office building i think we're thinking <laughs> this is a, an administration building yeah um so it's it's office hours and you know melbourne gets dark pretty early and it's pretty gray most of the year <laughs> so have you guys thought about you know what would it mean with artificial light at all or may, again maybe that's the next step thing yeah that that's something we've talked about i think uh, yeah. throughout the project but i guess that would involve a couple of other drawings i guess a reflected ceiling plan with the lights as well but we had thought about having the the lighting coming through um like between the panels yeah. and maybe uh, like underneath i guess that would be the next stage of planning the lighting scheme but yeah, that is something we've thought about it, but I guess have been included at this point. So, yeah. yeah. So the yeah. thing is that once you actually think about lighting, the moment mm -hmm. that you start introducing light sockets, the panelization on the top looks really tight. So then your your frequency of panels kind of change. But again, I'm just being a bit <laughs> a bit yeah. thinking. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. The materiality of it, you can also apply a reflective finish on all of the wood so that when light bounces through yeah. the finish of the wood it can actually trickle its way into the space but great idea research into how to actually get reflective wood panels that are have a veneer on them have a high reflectivity um, yeah. and also white color like maybe russian um type of plywood i know you selected your own species already yeah or maybe with the floor so that you guys use the dark floor yeah. here maybe if you use the white floor it would have helped bounce light more because it's black the light. Um, but no, excellent work. Exactly. I'm going to throw a curveball here. Yeah. <laughs> Just to be the. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. Uh, I mean, like, I'm no, no doubt it's super high level of work, but just let's say if it was a, um, a realistic project, some really annoying client would, you may come and say stuff like, oh, that looks hard to clean. Yeah, I got asked yeah. before. Maintenance. <laughs> and then what happened if that lady's foot dropped in the gap of the seat? These oh, are the, some of the, the, the seats. The, seat, um, the seats have a glass sort of um, yes. protection over it, so that, that's just sort of as a safety. You can't get them there, Chen. You can't get them there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some some clients would, would ask really like uh, just. So you you can, know, in, in terms uh, of cleaning, I mean, in terms of cleaning, Chen, I think the separation of the panels, I mean, it's really just about a simple dust up sort of going in between them to sort of get rid of the dust. And it is a little bit meticulous, but um, there's certainly access to it and access to be cleaned. Um, so um, I feel like at that. the same time, I guess the same comment that I added to the previous, um, to the previous team is also thinking of how the person is going to interact with it. Cause you also need to consider, you know, safety in this. So I also see you guys have a lot of sharp edges also very close to you know door heights and um and even someone you know it, it's someone might get a hand stuck i i work in rail and we are always thinking worst case scenario with rail <laughs> um but you kind of also need to consider you know 
it's a lot, it's people. It's a space where people are going to be. It's a space for the people. So how are they going to interact with it? And how are you going to create a safe space for them at the same time um, that they'll enjoy it and appreciate it? So again, that's probably um, what, yeah, that might, again, it's not really a critique, but it's something to consider. Yeah, and I, and I guess you could, you could, in a way, address that by actually rounding the edges and, and beveling the, um, the shapes of your wood. Yeah. Um, uh, another one in terms of that, uh, again, to be like a chen, is that um, uh, timber tends to burn when it's exposed on fire, mm. and it's a massive load of fire. So if, any, so if anybody asks you, just make sure that you say that all of your timber is fire treated. Um, yeah. That, that space is considered one fire zone. I was, I was about to say that. So. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, Thanks, guys. Is there anything to add, um, John or uh, uh, Josh? If not, we can move. Yeah, you don't need to. If you... <laughs> oh, I, I don't want to take up the time. I was, yeah, it looks, it looks really good, I thought. Um, um, for me, I, it, there was some um, poetry even in the resolution of the, the structure for, this, for the cantilever stair, which was a shame to see it covered by the timber. So I think about that um, next time you, you've um, worked these things out and how you can Best that. approach, um, you know, you know, doing the work that you're doing for for, for the cantilever steps, but actually not being able to see it, um, mm -hmm. in all the views, just didn't seem very productive. Well, mm. I think we when we talked about it, the panels uh, touching the stair came first, and we wanted to make the panels seem like the timber panels seem like they're pulling the stairs up and making them like you know supporting them, but it's kind of illusion. And they're not actually supporting them, but they're being um, supported by the, the walls on the existing building. So I think that was our design purpose was first with the timber panels making this seem like they're supporting the stair, but it's like an illusion in a way, if you know what I mean. Yeah. All right. Um, well done. And just to realize uh, Daniel, uh, one of our lecturers, asked the same question about the cleaning. <laughs> but um, that's all right. Oh, sorry. Thank to keep so on the schedule, we have to uh, keep our projects going. Thanks. Well done, all. Um, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Next group is Flutter. Please introduce yourself. So we have. Yeah. We oh, have. Uh, yeah. You muted. Yeah. Hi, yeah. I'm Rebecca. So we have Rebecca. I'm Mia. Mieta. I'm Shanoi. I haven't got my camera on. And Peter. I'm Peter. So, uh, please begin. Um, hi, I'm Peter. I'm Yetta. I'm Shanoi. And I'm Rebecca. And together we are proud to present to you our design proposition for the AD building called Flutter. The AD building is located on the Hawthorne campus of Swinburne University. As seen on the map, the AD building is located centrally on the campus, right next to the train line. This is a 3D model of the current site. The dark blue lines across the site are the current foot traffic routes, with the route leading east taking you towards the train station and the north-south route leading to the main parts of campus. Most people pass by the AD building without even acknowledging it, let alone passing through it. Our aim is to change that by renovating the section highlighted in the light blue colour, which will result in encouraging people to move throughout the building. On the screen now, you will see an insight into the building with the new proposed foot traffic path in the lighter blue colour. Our concept is to enhance the space by inviting people to move through the building. This has got a few key elements. Starting at the rear, we propose a waterproof canopy to provide a sheltered space for study or relaxation. The form then wraps through the building along the north wall of the hallway to emerge in the void around the staircase. By arcing up the form, we're hoping to encourage people to look up and explore further. As you can see, in some places, the form is unable to flow properly. So consequently, some small renovations need to undergo. On the left, you will see the current site with the changes we propose highlighted in blue. On the right is the renovated site. Starting at the rear again, we plan to give the light we plan to give the lift a facelift by adding a glass exterior and rounding the harsh corner to fit the organic form better. 
Through the hallway, we propose to remove the wall and door, which alone will encourage more movement through the building. Lastly, we propose to add glass panels to the roof to allow maximum amounts of light to beam into the space. This is crucial for the shadow play that we aim to create, which will be discussed shortly. This is a completed renovated site with flutters form displayed in the lightest blue. You can see the proposed foot traffic in the mid blue color is a lot more seamless after the renovations. These are our three precedents that have inspired our project. The Lincoln Park Pavilion with its continuous form and connection details. The Aspen Museum. This is where we got the sandwich structure from with the wave between two grids and the center Pompidou and the way the canopy flows around the building inside. First, we started by creating a set of quart grids to create our surface that would become the top boundary of the structure. Then this was smoothed and offset to create the lower boundary. It was important to have two separate surfaces so we could dynamically change the thickness of flutter to, to flow around the site. And this shows a section of our structure exploded out so we can focus on a couple of panels. Done with the top layer, each panel was divided into an even grid to create to then create the beams. The middle layer, we got points from both the bottom and top grids to be able to interpolate beams between them. And the bottom layer, we created another grid, but only ran the beams in one direction to give it a flowy effect. And here is a breakdown of each layer to show how flutter comes together. The construction method consists of three layers which are connected to each other using a bolted system. The bottom panel has a steel connection system placed at its intersection points where it is then connected to the steel plates which are embedded inside of each of the curved wooden panels. The middle panels are then connected to the top grid using the same steel construction method which is also placed on the top grid intersection points. The top grid consists of two rows of wooden panels that are connected through a groove system and then bolted down in the groove intersection. We chose plexiglass for the outer panels so the structure could shelter the occupant from weather conditions. We did three density studies where we explored different grid sizes and came to the conclusion that the second option best suited our structure in terms of the way it looked the light and shadows it would bring, and also the construction method of it. All the timber members are made of gray box eucalyptus varying of different sizes, and the top layer is glue laminated because of the extreme bending and a little twisting. The middle layer is CNC routed because each member is flat, and the bottom layer is um, steam bent because of the extreme bending and twisting that the form took. And this is what the completed structure looked like. For our remodeling of the AB building, we aim to maintain the historical aspects while enhancing the light and atmosphere of the space. We achieved this by creating Flutter's three layer continuous form while retaining the original facade and altering a section of the roof to increase light flow. Flutter's structure flowing structure draws the user down the hallway into our newly re redesigned courtyard space and upstairs into our indoor recreational area. We have modified the structure to increase the light flow which in turn allows unique shadows to be created throughout the day. Ultimately the design allows the user to experience the space differently with each interaction. The large flowing canopy contrasts the original building which elevates and aesthetics of the newly created recreational zone inside and out. As demonstrated in this plan of the ground floor, Flutter has three main connection points. These main connection points have been altered to preserve the flowing form of the structure. To maintain a continuous organic design throughout the building, we have rounded the corners of the elevator and hallway. Flutter continues to enrich the user's experience on the first floor. The plan allows us to see how the structure wraps around the staircase and onto the roof. Flutter has allowed the creation of a new light-filled recreational space, which was previously unutilized. The users can view the unique three-layer pa pattern from the windows of the elevator on the first floor. 
As you can see in the east elevation, we kept the original facade largely untouched. We only changed a section of the roof to, to glass to improve the light flow into the first floor and stairwell area. Our intention for the east elevation of the building was to pay tribute to the original heritage while hinting at the new improvements. The section pictured on this page demonstrates the fluid movement of the structure. The continuous uniform design excites and draws the user into the building. Section BB demonstrates how flooded is a hanging structure that creates interest and gives the building a new lease of life. The old dark landing is transformed with this artistic addition, reinventing and more effectively utilizing the space. Next, we would like to discuss some of the connection points to the existing building. Firstly, how the structure will connect to the walls, both externally and internally. The top and bottom cords of the structure are fitted and bolted into a steel plate, which is then bolted to the existing wall of the building. Flutter is also connected to the roof above the staircase using a steel wire connected from the peak of the roof to the highest point of the structure. This adds support and stability to the structure up. This shows a view from the exit of the AD building where you can see the shadows on the ground. The next slide is a view from another exit along the other side of the courtyard, again showing off the shadows. And now we have a view from inside the elevator looking over the top of Flutter. And to finish up, we have a view from inside the upper floor where you can see by creating the glass roof, we are able to get great shadows from our design. Thanks for listening to our presentation. Thank you guys, well done. Um, so perhaps this time we can start with uh, John or Josh. John, would you like to go first? Go first. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, John, yeah. Oh, well, you guys can start if you want. <laughs> hmm? um, yeah. I mean, really good work. And um, I guess one of the things I would say is uh, <clears throat> when you typically work with, uh, I guess you guys, are, this is like almost like a grid shell in a way. Um, but when you, when you look at grid shells, you typically have lighter than air structures. So you look at, for example, the work of the Institute of Lightweight Structures from Fryoto and um, all the projects that he did, um, uh, which had influenced uh, Jan Nippers and a lot of the uh, Fuxa's work that you see in, in Stuttgart and Wagner's bureaus, um, the British Museum in London and all of those structures that are really lightweight. Um, so I, I would look at maybe lightening a little bit the dimensions um, and um, if, if you're going to be using curved elements then maybe perhaps go a bit more crazy about the direction of the beams because at the moment the beams um, look like they're on a grid. So if they're going to be in a grid they can just be typical trusses. Um, but if you actually add a bit more curvature into um, the grid so that it's not a grid, then it actually makes a lot of sense because you can use a lot of curved elements. Uh, but the other one would be to make sure that the under, that the, the layer that is below and the layer that is above um, is quite lightweight and that also the connectors that connect the two layers, the two grid shows, um, are also quite lightweight. It just take advantage of the curvature because curved elements are stronger in the same way that a cylinder is stronger than a flat sheet. So it actually would help your structure be quite stiff um, and also take advantage of the fact that you're attaching to an existing building and that the structure is not doing technically a lot because it's actually just pretty much spanning between two points. So it's not really like, a let's say if you're doing a stadium where the roof is not so connected to anything but the ground and it's trying to thrust out. So I would, I would focus on essentially cleaning a little bit the, the structure, just a tad bit. Um, but overall, I think it's, the project looks quite interesting and I think it's an interesting, interesting proposition as well to use timber in this way and, and 
timbers are renewable materials, so it's actually quite appropriate. And right now it's a hot topic, especially in mass timber. So I guess this is the opposite of mass timber. Perhaps I'll bring it back to your exterior view, yeah. the exterior render that would cover some of the aspects that, um, yeah, about the support and, yeah. Yeah. And the, the one that looks from the back to the building, that would answer some of those questions. Yeah. I think it could be like, a, if you think about it, the spans are not that big mm -hmm. and it's um, supported. So you could almost either reduce the number of beams so mm -hmm. that maybe there's only four. Mm -hmm. So the, the frequency of the structure and, or maybe the size of that unit. Doesn't mean that yeah, because at the moment it looks like it's about a meter or 600 by 600 millimeters. And it could probably be two meters or three meters big, the, the actual unit of that module. But then optimize it and make it very thin and very almost like an eggshell. You know, an eggshell is really small and little the mm -hmm. the amount of curvature that it's holding. So, um, yeah, I don't know. That would be my comment. But I think overall, I think aesthetically, I quite like it, and I think it's going in the right direction. Great, thank you. No Josh, thank you. I think for me, I think um, compared to maybe some of the other presentations, there was a lot of resolution in the actual assembly of the timber, which was interesting because I think we needed to see how it would work. So that was good. But I think maybe it was lacking in more um, of, of how, you know, aside from that one detail of, of how it attaches on the vertical surface of the um, existing building, there's some um, lack of some details about how it attaches to the ground and how it interfaces in the interior aside from that small um, little hanging bit um, from the glass ceiling. Um, I didn't feel like there was um, as much um, resolution in those kinds of aspects, but there was you know, clearly a lot of thought in the, in the geometry and the, the formicking of the actual t timber bit, um, which, you know, which I think would, what we needed to see if you're proposing something that was made out of timber. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Anyone has anything to add? Um, well, just John. No. Um, well, I, I just want to add that um, great great work. Um, I really appreciate that you guys presented your benchmarks and where you actually um, it shows that you guys. Um, I know all, obviously all teams are doing your research, but when presenting, it's good to understand where you're coming from and you know understand your process. So it's good to see that you guys went through that process of understanding the benchmark. Um, my comment would be a bit similar to Alex a bit. Um, it's, it seems that, um, that mo that single module, if you see it in, in all the views that you show, it doesn't have, you, you, it has, it, it doesn't, I don't see that you guys have pushed, I don't see it's pushed to its limit in any form. It's, it seems very frequent and a bit rigid. So, um, I, I would have liked to see a bit more of exploration of, you know, how far can you actually take it? You know, how wide can it be? How, how long can it be? Does it actually need to be so frequent? Maybe, maybe it does. Um, and maybe it requires that extra step of, you know, of analyzing that, that pattern. But because you have a, a three-dimensional pattern, so you have, you have the, the linear base, then the X, um, and then like, and you have three different layers, but then it's seeing how these layers work together and how you can actually, you know, understand the tectonic of it and how you can actually push and pull it. So maybe it would have brought, you know, completely different resolution. Um, because right now it just feels very frequent and there isn't a lot of variety in it. Um, but you know, the, the imagery still looks wonderful. Um, but it would have been good to see, you know, Actually, and maybe it is that you guys, well, actually, the, the span of this doesn't allow us to go further than this. And then you actually do have parameters within your parametric design that you understand. And this is how the project is because of its tectonic, of how it's created. And then it actually brings it down to the sense of what parametric design is. You're, you're working within these parameters. Yeah, that's kind of all I have for this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think you guys did have a page of the, the grid, but it would be nice to see it on the overall structure. If you can bring that page, then. Uh, yeah. Good. Yeah, the density study. This one? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It would be nice to really see this on the 
on the whole form on and the then you can because yeah, yeah exactly. because I know you you did that on the on the basis of uh, aesthetic choice so yeah. it would be and also the the if you're gonna let's say in this one you're doing one meter 650 and then 450 mm -hmm. um, but the dimensions of all of your sub components are staying the same so I think if you're gonna go let's say to a two meter module then I think your dimension might get a bit bulkier but there's less frequency of them mm -hmm. so I think there's also a, another game to play with the cross section of the beams mm -hmm. yeah uh, where you change you make a bigger larger span to or one single direction span or double span and then depending on how you do that, you, if you have a two-way system or a single-way system, mm -hmm. it will change the cross-sections. And, and yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I think that in a way, that's kind of what you showed there. I think it's just like interpolating it in the window. Yeah. 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 All right. Well done. Well Thank done. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next group, uh, Curve Embrace, please. And please introduce uh, yourself to us. Hi, so, I'm Liana. Liana, there. Sally. We have uh, Sally. Yeah. Oh, oh, um, I can make this going right. Ghostly, ghostly. Uh, and Harun. Harun. I, uh, I don't oh, know what. Oh, it's got my. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Very uh, scary. Oh, <laughs> you want me to keep it like this, or does this work for you? I mean. <laughs> Your room is too too dark. That's why. Right. Um. Ah oh, yeah. Well, it's and oh yeah, no, it's it's a lot worse with the light on. Believe me, mate, it's a lot worse. And where's the other team member? Um, Zach doesn't have internet, so he's joining me through recordings. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, just so you guys know. That, that's okay. That's okay. Um, COVID please. Times. Start. Yeah, COVID times. It's hard. Alrighty. Alrighty. So um. <laughs> Welcome guests, tutors, and fellow students. We are group five and our project is called Curved Embrace. We hope you enjoy. Here is an analysis of the site. On the right, the map shows the location in relation to the Melbourne CBD. The analysis shows main roads, secondary roads, railway, and also the main pedestrian paths around the site. The sun path diagram illustrates the path of the sun during winter and summer, which shows how sunlight affects the site. Now onto the existing building. The current building has poor natural lighting in some areas and looks dated. Next are the current floor plans. We will be proposing a redesign of the roof of the foyer as well as the staircase. Next, we have a demolition drawing. The highlighted areas, the staircase and the roof, including the ceiling, will be redesigned. Now onto our proposed design. Our concept consists of a hanging wooden ceiling which is suspended from a steel framework. Above the frame are glass panels that let in an abundance of natural light. The ceiling acts as both a sculptural addition to the building as well as a sunshade. Next, we have the proposed floor plans. A redesigned staircase will let more light into the ground floor and also complement the curved form of the ceiling. Yeah, so for this north facing section, I've decided to use lighter tones and semi abstract textures and colors to convey the lighting effect, mood, and overall ambience of the space. The main emphasis is placed on the aesthetic changes made by our design an introduction of varied amounts of sunlight, an improvement to the artificially lit foyer, corridor, and introductory spaces this design encompasses. The east facing section is similarly drawn using light, cheerful tones. This section likewise showcases the light and shadow balance achieved by the wooden design piece, whilst also showcasing a different angle to view the overall placement and fitting of the design. The roof plan is used in, is used in showing the amount of space our design encompasses and a list of its current dimensions. It also indicates the proposed configuration of structural beams, gutters and openings within the wooden design piece itself. In the reflected ceiling plan, I have shown the location of the ceiling cables that will suspend our structure from our roof frame as you saw in the last drawing. As our structure is made from a randomised pattern, the location of the ceiling cables isn't 100% evenly placed. However, they have been specifically placed in between the teardrop shapes where the structure is going to be the strongest. Joinery Connection Drawing 1 is a joint collaboration between myself and Liana 
as it illustrates the meeting point between the wooden design piece and the structural steel frame. It also provides a cross section into the steel frame, detailing a double pane glass and welding points. Joiner Connection Drawing 2 shows a steel plate and accompanying screws that are used to fix a few key portions of the design to the wall for further stability. Whilst Joiner Connection Drawing 3 displays the support struts for the steel frame, it consists of two perpendicular beams that interlock with a vertical postal column extruding from the center. Our fourth connection drawing is a perspective which illustrates the internals of the structural beams. Whilst our fifth connection drawing displays a guttering system and waterproofing elements within the walls and ceilings to reduce leakage and subsequent damage. So when we were looking for a viable timber option, we had to consider something that was easily bendable, something that had a straight grain, and of course was an attractive color. So with that in mind, we selected Coastal Black Butt, um, and Coastal Black Butt has a density of, of 1,100 kilograms per meters cubed. Our ceiling structure's volume is approximately nine meters cubed, meaning that our structure is gonna weigh approximately 6.2 tons. Um, with that in mind, while selecting ceiling cables, we needed something that was going to be really strong to be able to hold that 6.2 tonnes, but also quite slim, slim line to match our design and have minimal impact on the light. So we chose a Runson Tentile Architecture ACS3 threaded terminal cable with a diameter of 5 mil. The glass we chose was the Viridian Advantage reflected hard-coated hard glass pane used for both glass ceilings and glass curtains in most commercial environments. All right, so looking at prefabrication, the main thing we had to think about in terms of prefabricating our design was how we're gonna fit the structure through the AD building doors, which are about 1.7 meters wide and two meters high. So what we're gonna do is divide the structure both vertically and horizontally as per the diagram in the bottom left-hand corner. And that's gonna be able to fit through the door as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner. So to create the curved structure, we're gonna use a process of steam bending as our material suits it, and the process is gonna have minimal visual impact on our design. So firstly, we're gonna start with a 20 mil piece of pre-cut wood. That wood's then gonna be placed into a mold and steam will be applied. The mold will then be compressed and the wood will be allowed to cool, resulting in a nice curved piece of wood. This will, this will be repeated until all eight pieces of the same segment can be placed on top of one another. Pins and glue are then going to be used to compress and glue the piece together, resulting in a very smooth piece of curvature, which is only going to have minimal visual impact on the side. To connect the segments, again, pins will be used where the segments naturally meet each other, as you can see in the bottom diagrams. And then looking at how we're actually going to combine the pieces, we're going to use a tongue and groove joint, as you can see in the diagram on the screen. Yep. The construction shadow drawing illustrates our process for assembling design in three separate phases. The first construction diagram shows how a frame is constructed in two stages off-site. Whilst the second diagram visualizes our process of using cranes to lift the two separate pieces into the space and have them welded together. Whilst the third shows our process of installing the wooden design elements into the foyer area. Hi everyone, here is a staircase part. You can see the curved ceiling concept in the first floor. It will make the ceiling lower, although the roof is made of the glass, and the concept of the ceiling will allow the light to come through from those holes. So the staircase is a floating design, which can better let the lights come from the first floor to the ground floor. As the AD building is a historical height, building, our renovation is to add some modern elements for the overall look. It can be make a contrast between old and new. So here are some plan drawings to show how people get from the entrance to the first floor. This is the section drawing. The staircase is made of the same materials as the ceiling in order to save the cost and uh, also make a stronger structure for the staircase. You can see the top of the detailed drawing to show each steps are used uh, 
Tambor used the mantle slab as the main support to put the middle, and the tambour slabs just cover the surface around the mantle slab. Next is the elevation drawing. I cast through the AD building to show the bank view of the staircase, which has two types of the structure, connect to the ceiling and connect between two landings, and the detailed drawings to show how to connect the existing wall and the ceiling. Because the staircase have some curved parts, so we need to think about how to bend the wood. Liana mentioned that the ceiling concept is use the steam bending. For this, for this thing, staircase part, I'm gonna use the curve cutting. And uh, here are some renders for the staircase. And Zach just wants to say one more thing. To finalize our presentation, we'll be showing some rendered perspectives of our design concept. The redesigned roof and staircase creates an opened, light-filled environment and the natural harmonious curves produce an even flow throughout the space. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, group. Right, please, our guest. Uh, I, I just gonna say the first thing, uh, can you go back to this section, sorry? Yeah. The first thing that struck me um, when I first saw the project was, there was you want a, the other one or? Yeah, no, this one's fine. Uh, really, really cool ceiling. And it looks really, really interesting. And it was such a great thing to bring into this building. And I thought, um, wouldn't it be cool if it, you know, instead of a stair, which we can get onto in a bit, but if it was a slide or, or a very dramatic ramp in the same curvature and the same language as the ceiling, which brings me to, to my second comment, which I felt like there was a big um, difference in the aesthetic language of the stair and the ceiling. Um, yes, materials, yes, materials are, are, are a project together, a project but, together but, but you know, yeah. because I think the form making was quite strong in, in the stair and ceiling and they each are talking their own language, which um, aside from materials, they don't, I don't think they, they speak to each other as much as they could. Um, and, you know, there could have been an opportunity, you know, whether it was in, in section or the way that you did the perforations okay. in the ceiling um, to tie it better together and um, yeah, making the language speak together in one space because they're, they're quite close to each other. Thanks, Josh. Um, yeah. <clears throat> one, one small observation, just staying on this uh, section, the door seems a bit too short for person. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. You know, that's my bad. I'll take that. Um, because yeah, I probably didn't scale those figures, right? Did I? Um, no, that's not real as well. <laughs> no. So it's more the figures, maybe. Yeah, yeah you're right. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the figures are what's scuffed in this uh, inspection. Yeah, that would be all right. <laughs> um, I think it's looking. I mean, it, I, I, when I was a student, uh, Hani Rashid did this uh, Reebok store in China. That was a render, and it, and it reminds me so much of this there. Um, it was like all glass. Yeah. In New York as well. Yeah. I mean, he never built it. It was a render. Oh. No, there's one in, in New York, Longchamp store. Oh yeah, yeah. Thomas Hathaway. Sorry. Thomas Hathaway. I don't know. This one was like in, I'm talking about 2004, <laughs> a long time ago. Um, but it's um, you know it's looking really good, and I and I quite like the detail of. Um, using the glass as the structural element and then hanging the timber from it. It's a bit counterintuitive. Um, so I'm not sure which one is supporting which there. Uh, and there's almost like an element of fragility in that. Uh, if you go to that detail where you have the, the glazing suspended. Oh uh, yeah, that one. Did you want this one here? Yeah. Yeah, that one. I mean, I think that's a quite a very nice detail um, and quite elegant. So in, in I know that you're showing their number two says hollow box steel 
but in a way you could almost make you could almost make everything out of glass. I mean, glass is actually quite structural. Um, they make bridges out of glass. Uh, I used to work in London doing a lot of Apple stores and we did a lot of projects just using glass, glass stairs. And um, you can pretty much suspend the entire um, oh. timber from the glass, which would be quite interesting. Um, but it, I, th I think these details are quite nice and, um, and, and working uh, and, and um, Space-wise, I think it's also quite nice that you um, started with a straight line and then did the curvature. So it's actually quite a way that it was controlled and not just adding curvature everywhere. And also when you look at it in plan, it's also quite controlled and on a diagrid. Um, and diagrids are actually quite nice and, and quite good because you can um, uh, put all the structure on the diagrid and then the diagrid wants to scissor, but then the glass panel in the middle doesn't allow it to you could then use it as well. I think it's a quite nice project. Well done, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, so um, again, great work. If you guys could go back to that section or a view where you can see either both the, the stair and the, yeah, this guy. Um, so my comment is a bit similar to Josh in the sense that you have very two strong concepts very close together. So in a way, um, you kind of don't perceive any hierarchy of, you know, which is the dominant one because they are both competing with each other because of their proximity. So they're very strong concepts, but it may make the space itself is not that big. So it might be overwhelming with, with, with competing designs. So did you guys, yeah. Um, yeah. in any way, uh, for instance, did you guys consider, um, in terms of your choice of design, was it intentional to just have these two um, very different concepts? Um, I just I would like to probably maybe if you guys can talk a bit more to that um, to why the reasons why between these two elements and their differences. Um, all right, well, I can try answering that question. Um, maybe I can jump in into that. <laughs> yeah, wonderful, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so I think this group, I have to actually say congratulations to that group because it has been very difficult and it has, there has been a couple of difficult situations. Um, so I have to say that I was the one that said, uh, let's divide these two things in two because um, uh, we wanted to uh, give a chance to one of the group members uh, to manifest her design abilities. Uh, so that's why. Um, so uh, this has been just a purely educational decision. So yeah, that's, that's totally fine. Um, then I guess the next, the next layer of this would be how do you make these two elements a family? So in design, you have to think about, you know, how, how you bring things together and how you make them a family and how they speak to each other. So maybe it is um, the preparation, because you do have the curvature working with you in terms of the stairs and the roof. So maybe it is about, you know how you have this, this, this facade where the panels come straight down. Maybe you work with the triangles opening up so you can see through the stair. So maybe it wasn't like a solid panel coming through and then they start to speak to each other. But maybe the sizing um, started to, you play with hierarchy in terms of the sizing. So maybe the sizing of the stair was a bit smaller and then the roof started to have, you know, its own sense of I'm, I'm, I'm one, stair is two, and, you know, um, but they're still part of the same, you know, they come together as a whole. So it's not something that the roof can go one place and the stair can go another and they don't talk to each other. You still want the person to feel like, you know, it's a uniform space. Yeah, um, absolutely. That's a great suggestion. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Probably at the next stage of this project, yeah, but yeah. Again, really, guys, yeah, and it's good it's that you put it together. Concepts. Yeah, it's, it's two strong concepts, but then how do you bring them together? Yeah, exactly. All right, thank you, thank so, you all. And do more, get the of the render because how the life passes through is pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, thank you. Uh, thank so you. It's uh, cumulus.